Hello my dear children, uh, as you see here on the screen we are going to discuss total internal reflection where in a prism. So we will be today learning about total internal reflection that takes place in a prism. So as I said to you in the last class, we use three uh, different types of prisms when we are learning about total internal reflection. Number one is 45-90-45 degree prism which is also called as total reflecting prism. So you can put a star mark here because you may get a question uh, in the exam okay which one is a total reflecting prism. So a prism okay whose three angles are 45 90 degree 45 degree is called total reflecting prism then the second type of prism that we will be using will be an equilateral prism means prism having the three angles okay 60 degree each then we'll be using the third type of prism that is 30 degree 90 degree and 60 degree prism okay it is also called as right angle prism so we'll be using these three kinds of prisms all these prisms are made up of glass okay and you know total internal reflection uh, takes place in a glass okay when the ray of light takes place uh, or moves from glass to the air or any other medium which which is rarer than the glass because you know for total internal reflection one of the condition is that the ray should travel from denser medium to the rarer medium and the second one is the angle of incidence should be greater than the angle of incidence should be greater than the angle of critical uh, sorry critical angle isn't it and the critical angle of glass is 42 degrees so if any incident ray okay which is uh, passing from glass to any other rarer medium and the angle of incidence uh, that is made between the surface separating these two media if the angle is greater than 42 degree then total internal reflection will takes place okay so now we will be discussing about this three kind of uh, uh, prism the total internal reflection taking place in this three uh, different types of prism one by one all right so let's first take 45 degree 90 degree 45 degree prism this prism is also called as right angled isolasis prism or the other name is right angled isolasis okay prism and all right and it is also called as what it is also called as reflecting total reflecting prism so please remember this okay total reflecting prism so total reflecting prism is a prism okay um, whose three angles are 45 90 45 now here we will be studying uh, three different ways or the total internal reflection that may occur in this total reflecting prism in three different ways number one is to deviate the ray of light through 90 degree means if the ray is traveling in this way you will be using this prism to deviate this ray through 90 degree so this is number a that is to deviate the ray of light through one uh, sorry 90 degree and number b is to deviate the ray of light through 180 degree means the ray of light is actually traveling in this direction from left to right but after passing through this prism, the ray of light will bounce uh, back or it will be uh, returned back to the same direction to which it was coming, that is from right to left. Understand? So that is what we will be studying in number B. And number C is to erect the inverted image without producing deviation in its path. Means if you have one okay, image, uh, sorry, one object, okay, uh, one uh, object then the image can be what inverted in this way also you can use this prism so here number C is the way in which we will be uh, using the 
right angled isosceles prism or total reflecting prism or we also say it as 45 degree 90 degree 45 degree prism all right so let's go to number a so in number a what are we doing we are deviating okay we are deviating okay a ray of light through 90 degree so here you see so here you see the principal uh, section of the prism okay here this is my 45 degree 90 degree and 45 degree prism so we are going to deviate the ray of light through 90 degree now whenever you are uh, trying to understand this uh, total internal reflection through prism you must have a good concept of angles which are formed in a triangle understand so angles which are formed in a triangle if you have a clear concept of this then you will be easily able to understand how the rays are bending and why the total internal reflection are taking place all right so now i have this principal section of the prism i should right angle as this is prism here a b c is the principal section so now i what i do what i will take is i will take the uh, refracting surface a b so a b you can see here i have a and here i have b so i am taking the surface refracting surface a b so this is the surface okay for you all to see okay now what am i going to do is i'm going to incident array normally on this surface a b now you know that whenever a ray of light is traveling uh, okay from one medium so now you know this is air and here i have this one is as glass isn't it so now you know the ray is traveling from one medium to another medium but thus a ray is striking on the surface at 90 degree means it is incident normally so whenever a ray of light is incident normally it passes undeviated and it strikes here on the surface uh, a c understand so when it strikes here i will draw a normal here so when i make a normal here what happens is that i will get this angle as 45 degree now can you all say how i got that 45 degree see if i draw this section okay i am drawing this section here now from the figure you can easily figure out that this is 90 degree this is my 45 degree which is already mentioned there in the figure so if this is 45 and this this is 90 degree what will be the remaining angle that will be 45 degree isn't it and now i'm drawing the normal here normal means 90 degree if this is 45 this will also be 45 and now you know here my incident angle is 45 degree and you know the critical angle for glass air interference is 42 degree so it is greater than 42 degree that is critical angle so total internal reflection will take place here and the, now the ray will travel okay and strike on the surface bc normally so when it's striking normally it passes undeviated so here you see that the first use of this right angled isolation prism is to deviate the ray of light if i name this this is suppose this, this is p b q r and s and t here you see that p to q and to r the ray is in this direction but from r it has now bended and now it is going to the uh, to the surface bc means it has now turned an angle of 90 degrees so you can use this prism to deviate the ray of light through 90 degree all right so i hope you understood this first figure now what or where it is used where we use this kind of prism so these kind of prisms are used in periscope now you know periscope in periscope we use plane mirror so in place of plane mirror okay in periscope we can use this uh, right angled isolation prism because you know whenever there is a total internal reflection the energy loss is very very minimum understand okay so the first one to deviate the ray of light to 90 degree now we have understood here isn't it okay now let's go to the number b now in number b what we will learn is we learn to deviate 
that is bend okay a ray of light ray of light okay through 180 degree how much 180 degree so I have here okay right isosceles prism or total reflecting prism and this is my principal section of the prism ABC where this angle is 45 degree this is my 90 degree and this angle C is 45 degree so now here again I have 45 degree 90 degree 45 degree prism so I'm using the second uh, same prism but here we are trying to use it in the second way that is to David the ray of light through 180 degree so now in the earlier one we use the surface a b so that the light enters to the prism through the surface a b now here we'll be using the hypotenuse that is a c okay so let me change the color of my pen so what i will do is i will place one object here suppose say this is my object okay now from the tip of the object i will pass a ray of light on the surface ac at normally so when it passes normally strikes normally it passes undeviated and it strikes on the surface a b here if i draw the normal you will get that this angle is 45 okay 45 degree so 45 degree means which is more than 42 42 is the critical angle of uh, glass air interference isn't it so what will happen total internal deflection will take place see whenever you are learning about total internal deflection please remember the ray of light should travel from denser to rarer and angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle so here you see this part of the ray is already inside the glass yes this part of the ray is already inside the glass now it is traveling through the glass to the air interference so denser to rarer one fulfillment is uh, one condition is fulfilled second one here my angle of incidence is 45 degree which is more than the critical angle so second condition is also fulfilled so what will happen total internal reflection will take place okay understand and the ray will travel towards the surface bc now at bc also it will not suffer refraction but here since this angle will be 45 degree what will happen total internal reflection will take place because the glass sorry the ray is traveling from glass to air and angle of incidence is greater than critical angle so the ray will bend and now return back to the surface ac normally and passes through it without deviating so here you see that the ray was actually growing from south towards the north now the ray af after suffering total internal reflection in the prism it is now traveling from north towards south isn't it yes i'm just showing you the direction all right so it is deviated through how many degrees 180 degrees understand now similarly i can draw the uh, second ray from the base of the object here it strikes on the surface ab here i have the normal this angle is greater than 45 so it total internal reflection occurs now here also in the second surface also the total internal reflection occurs and the ray now comes out of the prism okay and this is where my image will be seen and this is my object all right yes so this is how the uh, total reflecting prism or right angled isosceles prism or 45 degree 90 degree 45 degree prism can be used now where it is used it is used in binoculars okay understand or in camera to invert the image without the loss of intensity so here you see the the light intensity that is coming from the object okay will not be lost here when the light is traveling through the prism why because at each and every point total internal reflection is taking place and you know that whenever the total internal reflection takes place the light 
or the intensity of light or the energy contained in it will not be lost as in case of simple reflection all right so this is the second way in which our total inter uh, reflecting prism or isolasis right angle isolasis prism can be used all right okay now let's go to the second one in the second one uh, sorry third one in the third one how are we going to use this we are going to use it to okay erect the inverted erect the inverted image without deviation without deviation deviation here will not occur all right so for this i have the principal section abc of this uh, 45 45 degree 90 degree and 45 degree prism all right now how will i pass i'll pass the ray of light okay now you know this is the base of this prism so now what i will do is i will pass a ray of light which is parallel see remember parallel to the base of the prism understand so what will happen here this is my normal what will happen this angle okay will be less than the 45 degree so instead of total internal reflection okay what will happen refraction will take place here understand and at this surface if i draw the uh, per uh, thing normal this angle will be greater than the critical angle and what will happen total internal reflection okay will will take place are you getting my point and the ray will be coming out so here you see that there is no deviation the ray is traveling from left to right here before uh, before entering the prism as well as the ray is traveling from uh, left to right after it has come out of the prism all right okay so you can take one more ray also okay now if you are getting confused with my figure okay let me draw it uh, once again in a proper way so let me take let me take two rays okay let me take two rays which are parallel to the sorry it uh, I must draw a little bit at the lower side or you can say at the towards the base okay so I'm drawing one ray here and one ray here what will happen now it will go and strike here here it will be greater than this angle will be greater than critical angle so total internal reflection will take place here and now here it is traveling from glass to air so it has to bend away from the normal so this is my emergent ray similarly for the second ray it strikes here okay now here this angle will be greater than critical angle the ray is traveling from glass towards air isn't it so it will total internal reflection will take place here and this is the place where only the refraction will take place and this is my emergent ray so here why do we say without deviation without deviation why because the direction of the ray of light has not changed here at this place the ray of light okay at this place the ray of light is from left to right that is the incident rays whereas the emergent ray are also in the same direction that is from left to right so that is why we say without deviation and we say to erect so here if i have the object here or you can see image here you see the uh, uh, this portion if you follow and track back the path you can see it has now gone up okay the two reflected uh, the, the two incident ray here okay has now changed their actually that they have changed their positions here or the places here okay this ray was on the top now if you follow the path this ray the incident ray and this emergent ray okay it has gone down so the incident ray which was on the top after 
refraction uh, you know, passing through the prism the emergent ray has gone down so that is why we say we are using uh, to erect the inverted image so here you see if you uh, see properly if this is my image if this is the head of the image now this head of the image has now been raised up means it has been erected understand so this prism okay uh, can be used or you can say right okay angled isolation prism or total reflecting prism or 45 degree 90 degree 45 degree prism can be used to erect the inverted image but without deviation is it okay is it understood now where do we use this we use this in the slide projector so please learn this uh, uses also for this three ways all right okay now we go to the next prism prism number two okay here we are going to learn total internal reflection through a prism where the angles in the prism is 60 degree 60 degree and 60 degree so here you can see the principal section of the prism a b c where each and every angle is 60 degree all right yes now we are uh, going to see how you can actually okay deviate the ray okay or how the total internal reflection will take place okay so now i will take one incident ray here so here is my incident ray okay suppose if i name it as pq it's striking at the point q on the surface a b at 90 degree that is normally so it passes through the prism or goes into the prism without deviation now here what will happen here is this is my normal if this is 90 degree obviously this will be also 90 degree yes so i have somewhat this kind of figure here yes are you getting my point so this is my 60 this is my 90 so what will be the remaining one remaining angle will be 30 degree so this angle will be 30 degree so if this is 30 degree this will be my 60 degree why because this is my normal when i say normal when i draw normal this total angle here will be 90 degree the total angle more if this one is 30 upreko angle will be how much 90 minus 90 minus 30 that is 60 degrees so that is why i am telling you you must have a good concept regarding the angles of a triangle so here i have my incident angle as 60 degree which is greater okay than the critical angle so total internal reflection will take place and the ray will now get reflected and strike on the surface bc normally so when it passes or strikes the surface at normally it passes out undeviated so here this is my emergent ray so here you see how the rays were bended okay now again again let us see here if this is 90 degree if this is 60 degree so how much will be this angle this angle will be 30 degree so you know now again i have drawn a normal there if, so when i draw a normal this will be 90 degree 90 degree but this portion is 30 when you see your portion 60 so if this angle here is 60 this angle here is 60 so the ray has now bent or deviated in this way after total internal reflection yes so here you see half of the angle is 60 okay degree and the other half is 60 degree so the deviation occurring in this 60 degree 60 degree and 60 degree prism or you can say equilateral prism is 120 degrees so the angle of deviation or you can say the array is getting deviated through 120 degree okay so this is the second prism 60 degree 60 degree or equilateral prism where you saw the total internal reflection taking place okay are you getting my point okay now let's go to the third prism that is 30 degree 
30 degree 90 60 degree prism so this is our 30 degree 90 degree 60 degree prism which is also called as right angle prism because one of the angle here is 90 degree okay now here uh, this prism is a bit interesting one okay we'll have uh, uh, we have to learn four different figures for this prism so please pay attention so when i say four figures okay you'll see that we'll try to uh, try to incident the ray from all the three sides and we'll see one by one what will excuse me what will happen so uh, in the first step what we will do is we'll pass the ray of light from the surface or from the side bc okay so here i have b and here i have c so this is the surface through which i'll be inciting the array okay so here is my incident ray okay let me change the color of my pen so i have the incident ray here now you see that my incident ray pq is striking the surface bc normally normally 90 degree means it passes undeviated so it reaches and goes through the prism and reaches on the stripes on the surface b a a c understand so this is my 90 degree so this will be how much 30 degree this angle will be 30 degree why because if i draw the figure here this is my 90 degree this is 60 degree which is already there in the figure okay and this is my 30 degree because the totals or the sum of the angles of the triangle should be 180 degree so 90 plus 60 is 150 so 150 more cut is already 180 so 30 right so this is my 30 so if i draw the normal here then this angle will be how much 60 degree normal when you think 90 you know for you already 30 sir so 60 is already 90 so what will happen now you see that the ray qr if i draw this as name it as r q r is traveling from glass towards the air denser to rarer medium one of the me uh, one of the condition is fulfilled now here okay this angle is my angle of incidence which is greater than angle of sorry critical angle that is 40 degree for glass air interference so total internal reflection will take place and the ray will now travel from r towards s and strike the surface b q now the ray is traveling from denser to rarer all right denser to rarer so it has to bend away from the normal understand so this is how the deviation okay deviation will take place i hope you all understood this are you getting my point so this was the first diagram so here we what did we do we passed the ray from bc okay now let me make this prism again here so i have this prism okay a b c where this is my 90 degree this is my 60 and this is my 30 degree so in this first figure you saw i was passing the ray from b c now if i pass the ray from the surface a b it will pass through the prism undeviated understand it will strike the surface r are you getting my point so if i draw the normal here this is my 30 degree this will be 90 degree so yo kati bhayo this will be my 60 degree so if that is my 60 degree yo upre ko angle yo angle se kati bhayo 30 degree that is my angle of incidence is 30 degree are you getting my point now here if you see this interference this uh, sorry this portion of the ray ray is traveling through the glass towards the towards the air denser to denser to rarer one of the condition for total internal reflection is fulfilled but this angle is 30 degree which is my angle of incidence so here you see angle of incidence is less than critical angle because 30 degree is less than 42 degree so my second condition for total internal reflection is not fulfilled so the ray will just refract means it will pass through the denser medium to rarer medium and you know it bends away from the normal so this will be my emergent ray so at this situation so see actually we are learning the total internal reflection through prism but this is one of the condition 
when you are using the prism but total internal reflection is not taking place so please remember this one very important figure to remember here because you see that the ray is traveling through the prism that is our 30 degree 90 degree prism but total internal reflection is not taking place yogi a bc bada garda kheri ji ke hudai thiyo total internal reflection was taking place but when i chose the surface b is a b my <coughs> total internal reflection is not taking place so this is one one condition or one situation that you must keep in your mind now again let's let us use the same prism a b c we saw from this side total internal reflection was taking place from this side total internal reflection is not taking place now we are left with a c isn't it so now from the side a c also we will incident a ray of light normally so it passes through the prism undeviated strikes the surface a b so here i draw the normal okay so this is my 90 degree this is my 30 degree so this is my 60 degree so if this is my 60 degree then this angle will be my 30 degree so if you see this portion of the ray the ray is traveling from drenser to rarer okay so if this is p q and this is r if you see q r ray q r it is traveling from denser to rarer that is glass that is prism towards the air one of the condition for total internal reflection is fulfilled but this is my angle of incidence which is less than 42 degree so my second condition that is angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle for total internal reflection to take place is not fulfilled so here the ray will just pass through the refraction and pass out of the glass prism okay without total internal reflection and bend away from the normal so here this is the second situation or second condition okay where you see that the ray is traveling through the prism but total internal reflection is not taking place are you getting my point but here one exception is there okay now what is that exception i will show you here i am taking the same prism a b c this is my 60 degree okay this is my 90 degree and this is my 30 degree so i'm using the same right angled prism okay now I, what i will do is that i will pass a ray of light p q near to this portion of the prism that is near to the 60 degree portion of the prism so when i incident the ray normally it passes undeviated and it will strike on the surface b c so at the surface b c let me draw the normal so when i draw the normal what will happen this is my 90 degree this is my 60 degree 90 and 60 is how much 150 so the remaining angle will be 30 if this is 30 this angle will be 60 so that is my angle of incidence is 60 degree which is greater than than the critical angle one of the condition for total internal reflection is fulfilled here my angle of incidence is greater than critical angle now here what is happening the ray is traveling from glass towards the air that is from denser to rarer so second condition is also fulfilled so here you see both the condition for total internal reflection is taking what fulfilled here so what will happen total internal reflection will take place and the ray will bend towards the surface a b and this is my 60 degree understand yes now here what will happen is this is my 30 degree this is my 90 degree so this will be my 60 degree so you break up by your 30 degree so here now the ray is traveling from denser to rarer medium one condition for total internal reflection is fulfilled but the second condition that is angle of incidence is not greater than the critical angle that is 45 sorry 42 degree isn't it yes isn't it so 30 de 30 degree is less than 42 degree so what will happen total internal reflection will not take place here but simply the ray will get 
refracted now since there is traveling from denser to rarer medium it will bend away from the normal so this is one exception this is one condition when total internal reflection will again take place in a prism through the surface a c so here you saw okay you saw two condition two situation when total internal reflection is taking place number one is when the ray is traveling from b to c okay and number second one is here understand when the incident ray is near to 60 degree all right so i hope you have understood all um how many 10 figure 8 figures we did not today so 8 uh, diagrams okay i tried to explain you all the diagrams properly even then if you find any confusions any doubts you may always ask me okay you can uh, text it's always better to text in the class group rather than texting me individually because when you text in the class group even your friends will be uh, able to know okay uh, if uh, uh, or simply uh, it's like uh, it's a kind of sharing the information with all our class or uh, all of our friends in the class all right yes okay so today's assignment is okay uh, a question so the question is okay uh, you will uh, submit this assignment in the evening the question is uh, total uh, why why total internal reflecting prism is used in place of a plane mirror okay in a periscope okay in a periscope or in the other way you can be asked a question like this in a periscope okay instead of a glass uh, sorry in place of a, a plane mirror why a uh, total internal reflecting prism is used so this is your question you will find this uh, answer for this question in the book itself all right so that's all for today so i i'm eagerly waiting uh, the queries from your end thank you so much